Hey guys, it's Jim. Thanks for tuning in and coming back. I appreciate it. I hope you're having a great day wherever you may be. And today I'm gonna to talk about crafting just beautiful, stunning landscapes in Luminar. And I'm clenching my fist because I'm excited about this photo. It's a, uh, it's a long exposure I took in Canada uh, last summer and I just really like what I got out of it. Um, and so I wanted to share a video about how I created this landscape and how you too can hopefully use some of these tips and tricks to create your own stunning landscape. So let me show you the photo. Boom, there it is. Now, that's the final result. I guess that's kind of obvious. Let me show you how it started. That's how it started life. Now, this is a long exposure, a single exposure, and it's, uh, and I gotta admit, I don't remember. It was like about a three minute exposure, I think. And so um, that's part of where the drama comes from. As you can see that I had these nice clouds that are streaking across the sky, like they're coming from behind the mountains and kind of streaking overhead. It's reflected in the water, which I think just adds an element of kind of interest. You've got all these jagged peaks and, you know, which is just sort of dramatic. And then you got the really still water, which is still anyway, uh, this is Moraine Lake in the Canadian Rockies, but it's particularly still because it's like a three minute long exposure. So everything's just kind of soft and, uh, you know, buttery, I don't know. Um, but that's what I came up with. Now, uh, in looking at it, you might say, God, Jim, that's a lot of stuff. Um, and I'll tell you, I've actually brought the blue saturation down quite a bit. Um, you can look at the original color of the water. Now, this is a JPEG uh, that I saved as a, uh, no, it isn't, I'm sorry. This is a 16-bit TIFF that came over from Lightroom, and then I saved it in the Luminar native format. So it basically looks like a raw file. And what I mean by that is there's no contrast, there's no really anything and so just changing contrast and all that amps up the color a bit hence why i had to take it down but the the more important point to all that kind of rambling i guess i just did is that the blue of the water is really that blue you can look up moraine lake and you've probably seen pictures maybe you've been there and i hope that you have and if not get up there it's gorgeous but um uh, the water is just uh, there's a glacier basically at the back of the way back there kind of around the corner to the right and uh, you know all the minerals and stuff that get into the lake just cause it to have that crisp yummy blue color and boom there it is so i'm going to pause for a second i'm going to turn off all the filters and i'm going to walk through this edit and show you how i did it so hang on one second and i'll be right back okay so here we are now um here's the original and here's where we are after the develop filter i just can't turn that filter off because it's locked as as you probably know from using luminar yourself. And if you haven't got Luminar, you can check my link below. Um, that'll take you to the store to get it if you want to get it. I love it. It's incredibly powerful. It's amazing and all that stuff. Anyway, so what did I do? I did a couple of minor adjustments here. I took the temperature slightly left and the tent slightly right. It's just a habit I have of adjusting the temperature and tent. Depending on the photo, but probably 70 or 80% of the time I go slightly cooler and then slightly pinker on the tent. I don't know why, I just like that better. I don't really like the greens that much um, in a lot of photos, so I take the tent to the right. Um, anyway, I bumped up the contrast and took the highlights down. So highlights are negative 66. That's what they were without any adjustment. So I think, you know, negative wherever I was, 66 is, you know, right there is gonna look uh, pretty good. And then I give it a slight bump in clarity. Uh, the next filter I added was Accent AI, which to me is like the easy button. I use it a lot. And I don't really care. Some people probably think it's cheating. I don't care. It's, it's a great filter. It does a really incredible job of figuring out what a photo needs. Um, and boom, you know, it gave me a, a nice bump of brightness. Now, you can see I did some custom masking here. And let me show you what that mask looks like. That's what it looks like. And so basically, what I did is I applied Accent AI across the entire photo. And then I erased it from the trees. And the reason being is that I don't want to brighten those trees. I like the contrasty look, especially because the sky above it's fairly bright and the water reflecting the sky below that section of trees is pretty bright. I, d I don't want to brighten those trees because admittedly and truthfully, I don't really care. You can tell that they're trees. I'm not trying to create more visibility into that part of the photo. I like that bit of dark kind of in between the two bits of light. So that's why I did it that way. And then polarizing filter, just a simple, straightforward shot of that. It does give you a nice um, ability to sort of tame that brighter part of the sky, but it also makes the blues pop a little bit more. Let me show you again the before, right? And the 
after. You can see the blues are popping a little bit more and that's what the polarizing filter is really good at. So another reason that I employed it on this photo. Okay, next up is adjustable gradient. An incredible filter. You can see just from that, let me show you again. Here's the before, right? I mean, it's looking pretty good. Truthfully, I mean, I'm a fan because I shot it, so I'm a little biased, but I think the photo, even without any edits, I could tell I'm like, this is gonna be a just kind of a kick-ass looking photo because it's a gorgeous scene and it's dramatic. Um, and then I did the long exposure, which I'm just a huge fan of that um, when I do it right. I don't always do it right, but I got this one pretty right, I think. Um, and the scene's just, um, I think it's a, a good looking scene. And, and personally, I think I shot it pretty well. So anyway, um, I'm not trying to toot my own horn. I'm just happy with the photo. So let me turn on adjustable gradient and boom, you can see it really brought up some color. So what did I do? Okay, well, I left the exposure and contrast for the top of the photo the same, but I did bump up the vibrance and the warmth a little bit. So you can see that that the vi it got a little bit more colorful and punchy in the top of the photo. And then I did the same thing in the bottom. I actually increased the exposure. If you uh, if I take that back to zero, you can see it's a little bit darker. So in looking at the photo, that's why one of the reasons I used adjustable gradient. Well, I want to brighten that foreground. So I think I was at about 26 or 28. Let's just call it uh, 27. <laughs> Splitting the difference. Um, I'll leave the contrast where it, where it was, uh, which is at zero. But I bumped up the vibrance and the warmth as well. And the reason I bumped up the warmth on the bottom is because I bumped up the warmth on the top. So uh, I didn't do it the same amount. So I did 11 there and I did 15 down here. But what I want to do is make sure that tone tonally, uh, if you will, uh, in terms of their warmth, I want to make sure they're fairly similar. And that's because the bottom, if you will, is a reflection of the top. So you don't want it to be really overly blue in the bottom and then really overly warm at the top. It should, to me, uh, and I don't know scientifically if it's supposed to like look about the same, but it seems like it should. Uh, but artistically, if you will, um, I think it should, I mean, it's a mirror image, if you will, of the top. So the bottom, I think, should have similar sort of tones to the, to the, uh, the top. So that's why I kind of did them both with a little bit of warmth. Um, okay, so I think we're getting somewhere, and then I brought the structure filter in. And again, I did some masking here, and that's what I love about Luminar is you can apply a filter and then just take the brush and just mask that filter in to specific parts of the photo. You probably know this. If you don't, again, that's something about Luminar uh, that you should be aware of. You don't have to create a new layer and mask that layer. You can just take a filter and mask it in. I love that. That's the coolest thing. But I did something a little different here with the mask, and let me show you. I masked it in at 100% opacity across the mountains and across the foreground. Um, that's all rock. And I want the rock to be a little punchy, a little structure, a little uh, oomph, if you will, um, in that section. But I also, I wanted to bring up that reflection. Um, it is water, so to me, visually, it should be softer. But I also want it to be a little bit crisp, not overly crisp. So I used a reduced opacity brush here. And you can do that in the same filter. You can brush it in and one section at 100% and then 50% somewhere else and then 30% somewhere else or whatever. Um, one thing I think I would do actually that I would update here is I'm gonna click erase, I'm gonna do my left bracket key and I'm gonna erase um, the brush from there because I don't really care about making the trees a little more punchy or crispy because I don't care about the trees as I told you before. So I let that reflection kind of settle um, but I wanted to bring up some of this structure I just didn't want to go 100% in the water because to me, um, water generally is something I want to have smooth, especially on a long exposure. Now, a long exposure, um, it will give you greater reflections, especially if the water is really still like this lake is, but I don't want to overdo it. I don't want it to look like I just, you know, photoshopped it to where I took a mirror of the top and just flipped it and stuck it in the bottom. I don't want it to look like that. I want it to, I don't want it to look overly unnatural, I guess. I just want to bring up that reflection a little bit. So that's what I did there with the structure filter. Okay, saturation and vibrance. All I did is give it a little punch of vibrance. Very subtle, let me show you again. You may not have noticed. Um, in fact, I barely noticed. Uh, what is it, 16 or 18? Uh, so there's the before and there's the after. It's very subtle. I like to use vibrance more so than I do saturation, especially in a scene like this because there's a lot of saturation already. That blue is kind of awesome, I think, um, but there's a lot of it and it's screaming, hey, look how blue I am. 
Um, the Vibrance is going to bring up some of the non-primary colors and give them a little punch. So that's why I did that. Uh, and then Golden Hour. I gave that, what, 25 and 16. So 25 in the amount, 16 on saturation. And what I'm primarily doing there is emphasizing uh, the color in the clouds and a little bit of that color uh, over here, the light that's hitting that mountain. So let me show you again before Golden Hour. There it is. It's, it, you can see that the sun is hitting it because the sun, if you can't tell, you probably can, is out of frame to the right. So it's coming sort of across those mountains and it's hitting that one section of mountain. So um, I wanted to bring the golden hour filter in to give that a little bit of punch and I think that worked well. And then I'll wrap this layer with HSL. So I didn't do anything to hue. Those are all at zero. Saturation, I just took the blue down by 25 because I get a little nervous as much as I love color and punching those up and getting kind of crazy with the color. I also want to make it um, not completely, you know, oh my God, you know, the clown vomit that I've talked about before. I don't want to overdo it. Um, and I don't want people to be like, oh, geez, this, there's no such thing as that color blue in nature. Um, so I did take it down. And then I did a little bit. No, I didn't. I thought I did something on luminance here. Apparently I didn't. So that's that layer. And let me show you where we came from. There's the base exposure, right? And here we are. Now, I might would actually look at this photo and say, I'm done. And in fact, I did. But then I thought, I don't know if I'm really done because I'm I'm Jim. Well, you're, well maybe you don't know that. Hi, I'm Jim. Um, um, but the way I like to operate is ideally make a photo and then save it and sit on it and then come back and make some more edits to it. So that's what I did. So I came back with this layer one. Um, so I added a new layer, which in Luminar, you just click here plus and add new adjustment layer. And that's what I did. And what I did here is I just, first I started with the tone filter. So let me turn that on. Look at that, a bit more contrast as you can see here, uh, 29. I gave it a tiny, tiny bump in smart tone and I took the highlights down because they were still a little bit bright for me. So let me show you one more time before and after. Now, what that contrast adjustment does, and this is something to pay attention to, is contrast adjustments will make the colors look punchier. And so keep that in mind when you're editing your own photos. You can see that these colors just kind of took on a, a little bit more oomph, if you will. And uh, so we're going to fix that here in a second. Um, I also added Accent AI, and that was because that contrast adjustment made that left side of the frame a bit darker. Let me show you again. Darker left side of the frame and brighter. And you can probably see here, I also masked this in. So what did I do? Well, once again, I just deleted it from the trees area. And I didn't fully delete it, to be honest. It's kind of a sloppy job. So I can finish that while we're hanging out and chatting. But, um, you know, it doesn't really have to be perfect, to be honest. Um, you know, it's uh, it just has to be representative of what you're trying to achieve. But the point is, um, I wanted to remove the AI from that tree, uh, that section of trees, for the same reason I talked about earlier. I don't want to draw any attention or focus on those trees. I don't really care. I mean, they're in the photo, and the shape of them adds to it, but what I like most about it is that dark bit of that shape, that dark shape of trees coming in. It kind of splits the photo almost in half. Hey, above, I've got mountains with clouds. Below, I've got a reflection of mountains and a reflection of clouds. So I kind of like that. I want to keep it dark. Um, and so I removed Accent AI because that would brighten that section of the photo. And then I just went into HSL and I think I did, yeah, nothing with hue. Saturation, I took down the orange a little bit and the yellow because that section here on the mountains where the sun's hitting it was just getting, excuse me, too intense after um, this contrast adjustment and that sort of thing. So I took those down. I took the green down because the green was showing up a little too much. And again, I took the blue down because the blue's fairly intense even at these reduced levels. And so let me show you one more time. If you look at, here's the before, the HSL filter, pretty saturated, getting close to where, you know, even reaching my limits. And my tolerance for color is pretty high. But I said, hey, you know, let's be cool, Jim. Let's calm down a little bit. And so I wanted to take it down a little bit. And that's what I did with HSL. So that's how I wrapped up that layer. And that's when I thought I was done. Um, and I wasn't done because I like to add a few different little bits at the end of my editing process. I generally reserve things like noise reduction for the very end, uh, image radiance and things like that. And, and these are what I consider minor touch up, sort of creative or maybe dramatic or just uh, minor enhancements that I want to apply globally just to impact the look of the photo. And so 
but that's what I generally do at the end. And so in this case, I, I chose to add image radiance as well as noise reduction. So let me show you that. I'm on layer two now. And so let me turn on image radiance. And I don't know how well you can tell. Um, it softens up the photo a little bit. It uh, gives that a little bit of that fantasy glow. And for me, um, it's kind of a fantastical scene. So I think it sort of uh, warrants using something like image radiance where it gives you that kind of, um, you know, that romantic glow that I talked about in a previous uh, video. So I went to 21. I don't want to overdo it. So if you go something like that, you know, it gets real hardcore sort of uh, fantasy looking. I, I wanted to stay around, you know, 20, 25, whatever it was. Um, it gives it a nice little bit of mood enhancement, for lack of a better word, without overdoing it. Um, I also brightened it uh, up to 30. So at zero, it's a little bit darker. And that's one of the things with image radiance it can add. So let me show you. Um, you can see how it really adds a lot of contrast to the photo and, and thus darkening parts of the photo. I don't want to do that or overdo it because to me it's a beautiful scene and I want your eye to sort of carry through the scene and see the whole thing. So that's why I brightened it back up a little bit. I think I had it at 30. And that's simply because I don't want to lose um, visibility into the different parts of the photo, like the mountains in the distance, the stuff in the foreground, all that. I want you to see it. And while I purposefully left all these trees, there's a thunderstorm, um, all these trees on the right hand side kind of dark, I don't really care about bringing up visibility there, but the rest of the photo, absolutely, I want your eye to be, you know, sort of wandering around all these different bits of the photo. So that was it for image radiance. And then lastly, I added denoise. And so I just smoothed out a, a couple of parts of the photo and let me show you, and you may not be able to tell um, just by looking at it when I turned on the filter, but let me show you the mask and tell you what I did. So let me click on that and there you go. So I basically, I bumped up luminosity and color both, uh, left boost in the middle, uh, but basically I masked it into the sky, but in the water, I only masked the noise reduction into this part of the reflection. Let me turn it off. It's this part of the reflection here. In other words, I did not mask it in to the reflection that includes the mountains. And that's because noise reduction or denoising, it, it basically smooths out the photo. And while that works really well on a lot of things, what I didn't want to do is basically reverse uh, that structure that I added into that earlier in the video. I wanted to keep that reflection kind of crisp, but not overly crisp but I don't want to soften it. I like it the way it is. And so I just selectively applied noise reduction. Normally for still water like this, if the reflection component wasn't a big piece of it, or if it was just sunset color being reflected, then sure, I'd probably do the whole thing because I'm not as concerned about a crisp reflection if it's just light and color. But in this case, it's actual physical structure, which is the mountains. And since that's being reflected, I wanted to uh, maintain that kind of crispness there and I think it gives a little bit more of um, a feeling to the viewer like you can walk into the photo and, and be a part of it and so I don't want to lose that and that's really what I did and so let me show you the before and after the entire photo there's the before base photo no edits just straight out of camera basically and there's the after and so that's a number of different edits across these three layers and that's representative of the landscape uh, I can't even say it, landscape workflow that I would do. Now, truthfully, um, every photo is different. And so I wouldn't necessarily have a specific type uh, or list of steps that I would follow every time. I mean, I generally do things in similar ways. And, um, but you know, the filters that I choose really depend on the image and what look I'm going for. And so this is a representative example of editing a landscape photo in Luminar, but it doesn't mean I do the exact same filters every time. I recommend that you experiment, try things, just you know, see what works for you because that's the beauty of Luminar. There's a lot of tools, a lot of things you could do, and therefore a lot of different results you can get, and that's what makes it fun. So I hope that's helpful. One more time, there's the before, and there's the after. And let me do a split screen. You can see we came a pretty long way. You can see how we warmed up the clouds, which I think adds to the, uh, the element of uh, it being sunset, right? I think it's kind of probably kind of clear that it's sunset, especially the light over here. But I think adding a little bit of the warmth to the clouds helps. And of course that reflection I think is just uh, beautiful. So that's my photo and my video. I hope that you liked it, my friends. If you did, please hit like and subscribe. Leave a comment, let me know what you think about it. If you have other ideas, uh, things you might want me to cover, leave those as well and uh, share with your friends. 
And uh, that's really it. So thanks for watching. I appreciate it very much. Have a great day wherever you are. I'll see you real soon. And adios.